the 300 blackout versus 556 nato what is going to be right for your next ar-15 dave and i are going to discuss it Hello, everyone. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to talk about two of the most popular AR-15 cartridges in the country, one of which, of course, is the king of rifle cartridges in the country, the 556. Oh, yeah. And the other is kind of a newcomer, but it's mm-hmm. becoming increasingly popular, the 300 AAC Blackout, to use the full name. And, of course, AAC stands for... Advanced Armament Corporation. God bless them. Absolutely. No, uh, these, like you said, Dave, these are probably the two most popular calibers for your AR-15. And if you're looking for ammo for your AR-15, make sure you click on that link down in the description. Of course, hitting that like and subscribe button helps, but clicking on that link down there, get your free $20 off coupon helps even more so we can get you more and more content out here. But yeah, I have to say, in my opinion, the 300 Blackout has to be the most successful AR-15 conversion out there, and there are several of them, like the 6.5 yeah. Grendel and the, the does SPC. Does it really trump the 22 LR? Or are we even counting Okay, that? all right, you got me on that one. I did forget the 22 LR yeah, conversions. Yeah, I did too. It almost doesn't feel like it counts. Yeah, but, uh, kind of, but... I guess it is technically ammunition. It's true. It does sling lead down range, so, you know, you can't go wrong with the 22 LR. But as far as center fire cartridges, uh, let me qualify that there, uh, then, yeah, I think 300 Blackout probably has to be the most successful out of all of them. And it is kind of a... Uh, I mean, I always say, like, you, so many new rounds get introduced each year. Yeah, and it's it's like betting on horses, wondering mm-hmm. whether any of them are going to become successful. And the 300 blackout, somewhat recent. I'm totally guessing here. I think it was around aught seven it came out. I should look it up. All right, I'm a fool. It was approved by Sammy on January 17th, 2011. So even still, newer, still a baby in in cartridge terms. It really is, and, and like you said, there are so many cartridges that get put out for the AR, and it's, it's like you, you never know what's going to be that boutique round, and it's like, should you invest in getting a new barrel and a new bolt? Are you going to have to invest in new magazines, which in my opinion is a huge question, because you know you can find those 5.56 magazines everywhere, but you know finding, say, oh, I don't know, a 6.8 SPC magazine, not necessarily the easiest thing to do. I think that's the coolest thing about the 300 blackout but are we jumping the gun when we talk about magazine compatibility i mean we never jump the gun here we always take the gun with us but uh you know i think the magazine thing is the one of the huge selling points for the 300 blackout because when they developed it they developed it with the ar-15 magazine in mind because Rumor has it that, you know, a, a spec ops operator, we don't know who it was, came to, you know, AAC and like, hey, we want more oomph in our AR-15 and 5.56 just isn't giving us what we want. And uh, they said, well, they have this wish list of stuff, right? It's like it's got to use the same bolt. It's got to use the same magazine and maintain the 30 round magazine capacity, which was the big the big thing, in my opinion. And yeah. and then they're don't like, try to set your local mall Santa. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, you 6.5 Grendel, 6.8 SPC, they're all great and all, but you're going to have reduced magazine capacity, whereas a 300 Blackout, you can have that full 30 rounds in there. Yeah, really neat. Same mags. Yes. Now, I have heard that dedicated 300 AAC Blackout magazines work just a little bit more reliably. In my experience, not worth the extra investment. If maybe one out of every 3,000 rounds feeds correctly. Absolutely. But, uh, Absolutely. I, the it one thing I'll, I'll ca- the one thing I'll caveat that with is make sure you label your magazines. The last thing you want to do is to jam a three hundred blackout in your five five six chamber. Not going to yeah. be a good day. No, that's no more rifle. Exactly. Um, it might make sense to just so you never accidentally do that. Uh, and you know the cool thing is there's a lot of aftermarket parts that you can do that with. I know like if you're using P mags, if you like that, they have the different base plates, so you could maybe color them differently for your 300 blackouts. Um, if you use like hex mags or something like that, some of them even have like little sticker labels that you can put on there so that you never mix your magazines up. I gotta admit, I've never used a pen dot matrix in my life, but I like seeing those <laughs> little 
Braille-esque grids on my magazines. Looks real official. Oh, it's really cool. I, I mean, there's lots of different options out there, but all, all I want to say, guys, just make sure you don't get those mags mixed up. The last thing I want is another email saying, oh, I blew up my AR-15. Thankfully, I haven't gotten any of those yet, but I don't want to have the first one. Uh, so... <laughs> That just begs be, the question, Chris. What if I put 223 down my 300 blackout? So it's not going to be supported by the chamber, uh, you know, when you stick it in there for the most part. Uh, and am I, you're shooting a 22 caliber bullet down a 30 caliber barrel. Um, you're not going to have any bullet stabilization at all. Are you going to blow up your AR-15? Probably not. Are you going to be able to hit the broadside of a barn? Probably not. Uh, because there's going to be no twist on that bullet because it's not engaging the rifling at all. Uh, so it's basically going to come out and it's probably going to start keyholing. It'll start tumbling end over end. Yeah. So maybe a threat at five yards. I maybe. Mean, I mean, if, if you had to. But I mean, engaging in a fist fight. But uh, I mean, at that, at that point, you could just butt stock them if you had to, uh, you know. Uh, but of course, a bullet would be a little bit more effective in that uh, situation. But still, it's not something I would recommend. Uh, are you going to completely jack up your rifle? No, you might have a failure to extract, uh, especially if the brass like ex has to forcefully expand around the chamber like that. Uh, probably not a good day for extraction, but are you going to you know blow up your rifle? I don't think so. You've touched on the uh, defining difference between these two rounds, and that's their their bullet diameters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you that's the big your, one. You're 22, but here's your chance to actually find America's beloved uh, 30 cal through an AR. And should be the perfect mix. It really is. And uh, it's one of those things is like they didn't want to upgrade the AR-10. I mean, AR-10s are heavier. They're more expensive. You got to buy a whole new platform, basically. And this gives you, you know, really the terminal ballistics of a 762 by 39 in an AR-15 package without having to completely mess up the mags. I mean, have you seen uh, 762 by 39 AR mags? It looks like about a half circle. Yeah, yeah, and, and though they're reasonably reliable, That's they're big just question. never going to be as good as a uh, as an AK-47. Definitely, so, definitely. Are, yeah. the, are the external ballistics pretty similar to the 762-39? Very what close, very Maybe close, and I, I pulled them up because I had a feeling you would bring this up because I know you 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 love the 762 by 39 So, uh, you know, muzzle velocity on your typical 123 grain uh, 762 by 39 is going to be about about 2300 uh, for the blackout yeah now of course we need to clarify this as there's subsonic and supersonic rounds we're only uh, in comparing to 39 we'll obviously only talk about supersonic rounds uh, about 2250 muzzle velocity so I mean you lose about pretty 100 apples to apples pretty darn close I mean only 100 feet per second there's no way you're gonna be really able to tell the difference between that the, that much uh, muzzle velocity uh, and, you know, the kinetic energy is very same, similar as well, the, the muzzle energy. So it really is a very close comparison. And that's what they were going for. They wanted to get that those 762 by 39 ballistics into the AR-15 package. Man, it makes you wonder what Kalashnikov would have thought. Oh, I'm sure he would not be happy. Uh, but, you know, you look at the CMMG Mutant or something like that, you know, a, a legit AR-15 762 by 39 conversion, and I'm sure he's probably, uh, you know, taking shots of vodka with Lennon uh, discussing that. <laughs> the uh, the 300 blackouts trajectory is a little bit steeper than you could possibly expect from your 5.56. Oh, absolutely. No, that uh, that really fast 5.56 bullet, especially like the 55 grainers going like 3,200 feet per second, going to have a flatter trajectory than any 300 blackout round out there. And that's just straight physics. Uh, you know, it's a bigger, heavier bullet. It's going slower. It's going to drop more over distance. And I think, in truth, probably about 250 yards effective range on 300 blackout. So about half that of the 556? Yeah, thereabouts. I mean, you just, you start losing, uh, you know, kinetic energy and stuff like that. Once you get out that far, uh, you know, it starts to have problems. And I mean, if we're talking about subsonic rounds for 300 blackout, that's point blank indoor range only if you ask me part of the brilliance of the 300 blackouts design is that the cartridge can accommodate so massive a bullet I oh mean, yeah huge range like some of the lightest 300 blackout bullets weigh less than 80 grains those are mm -hmm. really unusual specialty things but at its fattest the 300 blackout gets to be about 220 yes and, and those things are that's massive. almost unheard of in the ammo world 
Oh, it's massive. That's huge. And the cool thing about those subsonic rounds with a suppressor, which is what the 300 Blackout is designed to be shot with, absolutely hearing safe. Now, again, I would never recommend you just go shooting willy-nilly without your, your ear protection uh, because hearing loss is permanent as of now. And uh, But, I mean, it's like movie-level quiet uh, with those 300 Blackout subsonics. It's ridiculous. Have you heard it, Dave? Yeah, it's like that. Check, 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 check. Uh, you just hear the action moving, and that's it for the most part. Uh, and, and, you know, that brings up another point is the design of the 300 Blackout. Not only can it fire the, this, you know, wide range of bullet weights, it's designed to be fired in an SBR with a suppressor. Hmm. So unsuppressed, am I going to lose accuracy? What, what aspects of performance would suffer for not firing it as designed? You're not going to lose accuracy or anything like that. Uh, you know, and I get it. Suppressors aren't cheap, and getting a tax stamp for both an SBR, so something under 16 yeah. inches, and a suppressor. I mean, you're just throwing an extra 400 bucks at the federal government. And I understand. You know, a lot of our viewers may not look kindly upon having to do that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you really want to give them your fingerprints so you can buy yeah. a. Uh... I can. A couple dollars worth of steel, really. I get it. I, I totally get it. And, of course, that's up to everybody's own personal decision as to, you know, what they want to do. Of course, we would never advocate for doing anything illegal uh, here on the channel. Uh, you should never no. do anything like that and always follow all of your state and local laws. But even if, uh, you know, you've got like a 16-inch barrel 300 blackout, you're not going to lose anything. But the question is, are you gaining anything by having a longer barrel? In this case, actually, you're not. Uh, you know, like with the 5.56, five, it was really kind of designed with that 20-inch barrel in mind for the M16. The 300 Blackout was actually designed for about a 9 to 10-inch barrel. That's wild. Yeah. And, and how, do, how does a man, how does so short a barrel, must have a pretty aggressive twist to stabilize so heavy a 220-grain bullet? And we're talking subsonic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the twist rate is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit faster. Uh, I would have to go and check on that for just to be, you know, to quote actual numbers as far as twist rates are concerned. But uh, not only that, it's, it's more the cartridge design itself. It's designed to have that full powder burn in those nine inches of barrel length. So whereas a 5.56, if you're running like a 16-inch barrel, you'll see increased performance when you move to a 20-inch barrel as far as muzzle velocity is concerned. 300 blackout, awesome. not so much. It's really just a difference in propellant formulation. Mm -hmm. And just how, you know, how it burns, uh, you know, the cartridge design, that sort of thing. Uh, but they basically built it with that SBR in mind, those shorter, compact M4 carbines that our soldiers are running, especially the spec op guys who get to run whatever they want, of course. Uh, you know, but they have those tight little packages. They don't have to pay out tax stamps like we do. Uh, so they get all the cool toys. Uh, yep. And... Yeah, it's amazing. It, they get paid to shoot. I know, right? I, I'm working on that personally, but uh, sadly, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't gotten the free blank check yet for ammo purchases. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you know, getting free ammo, it's great, but as soon as someone tells me I have to do push-ups. Oh, so uh, yeah, that's the problem, right? Kind of. Uh, God bless anyone who can be uh, forced to make their bed after the age of 18. Of course, and of course, we always support our armed forces here at Ammo.com. And when you do make your purchase, make sure that you're checking on that donation box. Uh, we donate to a lot of charities that support our, our troops, our soldiers, and our veterans here. Uh, something we're very proud of that we take very seriously here at Ammo.com. Oh, yeah. Wounded Warriors is one of our mm -hmm. top, uh, our customers' top picks for charities and homes for our troops. is Absolutely. Right up there, too. It always makes me happy to see the vet-oriented businesses topping our lists every month. Definitely, definitely support that. But yeah, you know, getting back to the 300 Blackout, you know, initially it was kind of designed for that specialized role, but it really has exploded on the civilian market as a hunting round, I think it is really interesting. Yeah, this one just annihilate hawks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the supersonic, like the 125 grainers, really potent on hogs, which are very, uh, you know, a huge nuisance down in the south for farmers uh, and things like that. And so the 300 Blackout's given them a really nice platform in a semi-automatic uh, that can really uh, take care of business. Now, one thing I will caveat, uh, unless you have a hunting-specific subsonic round, it's not recommended to hunt with those subsonics. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously... You know what you're doing. We ain't gonna stop you. Of course. A little, little bit, a uh, little bit tricky. 
especially when you're talking about the even steeper parabolic trajectory of the oh, yeah. subsonic. Mm -hmm. if it's an OT, even if it's open to tip, it's going to take a nosedive quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to be close for those, uh, for sure. You got to have a lot of dope on that scope to make sure that you can uh, you can hit your target uh, if you're taking any type of a distance shot with a subsonic round. Um, you were talking about spec ops, guys. Mm -hmm. Do we actually know for sure whether... The U.S. Armed Forces have used a 300 AAC blackout for uh, combat missions. Of course not. You think they would tell us that sort of thing? So uh, not, well, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly sure they use the 556 in combat. Oh, That's just a, maybe a once or twice. Secret. Once maybe or twice. Maybe here and there, now and then. But the 300 blackout, it's uh, still kind of an information blackout on that, isn't it? Yeah, they haven't really said one way or another uh, if they've used it in combat. At least I haven't seen any reports uh, along those lines. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody down in the comments can point me that direction. That would be great. If you do have that info, post it down there for us. I'd love to see it. Uh, but, yeah, there's no, been no confirmed reports that I'm aware of that we've actually used this stuff in combat, but I can't imagine that they would develop it and not have some application. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, the Army was really happy with that when that came out, and uh, it's quite the round. I guess you're not going to tell these guys what they can't use on missions. So. That's for sure. Uh, and like I said, they get all the cool stuff. And it was initially developed for that purpose. They wanted to have you know better terminal ballistics because they weren't happy with what the 556 was doing. And you know this is kind of the main genesis for why there have been so many attempted adaptations for new cartridges to the AR-15. Chris, I gotta ask. Um, and this might be the 300 blackouts main not selling point. Mm -hmm. Significantly more expensive than 556. Oh yeah, that that is that is the one sticking point. If you ask me, for 300 blackout, that uh, it really kind of turns people off. I mean, you're you're looking at at least double the price typically for 556. Usually around about a buck around uh, for 300 blackout with current prices. Hmm. And uh, hopefully to get better one day. No, oh, let's but hope. Yeah, that, that's not just because uh, it costs more to manufacture it. You just significantly decrease demand means that they they don't have to retool production lines as often. They don't have to, uh, you know, they can they can bulk sell it. You, you're just kind of getting fined for going a little more niche with the 300 blackout. It's true. And, you know, one way that you can kind of combat that is reloading. Of course, if you've watched any of our podcasts before, you guys will know that I love reloading. It is my thing. And uh, reloading for 300 blackout can be really fun, uh, really rewarding, because you can really tailor those rounds how you want. It will save you some money overall, but in my experience, you know, any money you save, you just shoot that much more. So, uh, But you get to shoot more for less, so you can never complain about that. Can I just use a 308 bullet for any 300 blackout load? Uh, I wouldn't say any load, uh, but yes, you will be using a .308 diameter bullet just like you would for a 308 uh, Winchester or a 300 Win Mag uh, or anything like that. So uh, most of the loads for 300 blackout are like 110 or 125 grain, but I have seen 147s as well, which the 147 grain Botel uh, is pretty easy to find. Cool. So at least you're going to have an easy time finding bullets. Yeah, exactly. It's the most po one of the most popular reloading calibers, in my opinion, right up there with .224, which is what 5.56 shoots. And uh, you should have no problem finding bullets. Those 30 cal bullets are everywhere. And I know that uh, the 223 rem is the parent case. It is. Of 300 black. Is it? makes me wonder can i make my own 300 blackout brass without going insane in the process you can actually it's not too difficult uh i've not done it personally but it's definitely a project i want to undertake at some point which would actually be another subject of another cool video we could do here uh but from what i understand you basically just need to chop down the case a little bit on that 556 and run it through your 300 blackout resizing die and you should be okay uh, at that point just make sure that your cartridge length is appropriate uh for your loads Always look at your reloading manual for those numbers because I'm not going to quote them here. Uh, but uh, you know, no, recite the entire uh, reloading data for 300 blackout. Well, you know, I may have the spear reloading manual right here. Uh, I'm not going to say that I don't keep it next to the oh. desk uh, just in case. But uh, yeah, I can promise you I don't have that thing memorized. Sadly, you know, we get a lot of customers ask us if they can fire their 300 AAC blackout we sell and their 300 Winchester Magnum rifles. And uh, it's you know, just the, the curse of sharing the first number. It really is. And it's kind of the one downside to cartridge naming 
uh, if you ask me. I, I feel like, honestly, in some ways, the NATO naming system is a little bit better uh, because it causes less confusion. But even yeah. then, the shorthanded version of those uh, sometimes can be confusing as well because you look at, you know, 762 by 51, which is, you know, 308, and 762 by 39. You're like, oh, they fire the same diameter bullet, where actually yeah, they don't. Yeah, get plenty of those fellas by 308 for their AKs. Yep. They get, they get disappointed, too. And it's yeah. only going to get worse because Wilson Combat recently introduced the 300 Hammer, mm -hmm. which is going to, uh, if that catches on, it's just going to make life even more complicated for buying ammo. It'll be 357 SIG all over again. Oh, gosh. Don't, and 445 Gap. Let's not for, forget the 45 Gap. Uh, yeah, at least that's so rare now that people might not even find it often enough to mistake it for the real thing. Thank heavens as far as that's concerned. But guys, just make sure you're buying the right ammo for your rifle. As always, the caliber should be stamped on your barrel, uh, so make sure that you're following that uh, and you know, save yourself a lot of headaches. To one more question mm -hmm. about this. 300 Whisper. Oh, yes. So the, the Wildcat that the 300 Blackout was derived from? That is correct. Been? Yeah, so uh, again, Reloaders making history here. Uh, you know, so the 300 Whisper was a, a Wildcat cartridge that they kind of used as a baseline for... Uh, the 300 blackout and they couldn't just take the 300 whisper and start manufacturing it because it wasn't sammy certified it didn't have that industry standard made yet so they had to make the 300 blackout instead well that begs the question can i safely fly a 300 whisper because it is factory loaded you, we do sell it once in a blue moon but we still do is that safe for a 300 blackout I would need to double check on that just to make sure that everything is the same. Uh, I'm again, I don't have the 300 whisper data in front of me, uh, but uh, it should be pretty darn close. If memory serves, I think they are dimensionally almost identical. Huh? So it might just be like a uh, 308 versus 762 kind of thing. I'm pretty sure. Uh, again, down in the comments, sound off if you know for that for sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, of course we want to share proper information here. So if we've made a mistake, feel free to correct us down in the comments. We always appreciate it. Yeah. So Chris, I mean, it sounds like a suppressed 300 blackout SBR is, is going to dominate for a home defense situation. Dude, I, it is honestly my next AR build. That's what I'm looking at, to be honest with you. I mean, those subsonics uh, in, you know, a, a self-defense situation are going to be spectacular. Uh, you know, not only is it going to be hearing safe, it's going to be that nice, tight, compact package that you need in a self-defense, home defense situation. And uh, with that suppressor, I mean, you're going to have virtually no muzzle rise on that thing. Your follow-up shots are going to be ridiculously fast. So for a home defense tool, this might just be the perfect package. I mean, it's up there. It's up there with like the 458 SOCOM or something like that. But yeah, I personally, I love the 300 Blackout for home defense. It's exactly what the round was made for. It was made for that urban combat, that CQB uh, self-defense situation for where you want fast follow-up shots and low muzzle rise. Those subsonic rounds are going to be devastating on, uh, let's just say, two-legged varmints. Uh, and, uh, you know, would really do the job. So I can wholeheartedly endorse the 300 Blackout for that. Now, we touched on its uh, suitability for varmints and hogs. 300 Blackout, not a super popular deer cartridge, just like any other intermediate combat cartridge isn't going to be. That said, plenty of dudes are bagging Bambies with the 300 Black. They are, and they're actually starting to offer bolt-action rifles uh, in 300 Blackout. I know Ruger has the uh, the Ruger American uh, Predator, if I'm not mistaken, in 300 Blackout. Uh, yeah. it's, it's either that or the Tactical. I, I get those mixed up. It might be the, the Ruger American Tactical uh, that they have chambered in 300 Blackout. I'm pretty sure Savage has one now uh, in 300 Blackout. So it is becoming a more popular deer cartridge. You just got to be fairly close in, and you're going to have to shoot those supersonic rounds. You can't be hunting Bambi with subsonics. Yeah, these rifles must have longer barrels than 16 inches if they're they're placing a premium on accuracy. Or is it really true that if you lengthen a barrel, it's not going to become significantly better? It really depends on the cartridge, and I think for the 300 Blackout, you don't need a super long barrel. Uh, that you know accuracy paradigm is more closely uh, mirrored to the muzzle velocity uh, because for mm -hmm. those long range shots, you want that extra muzzle velocity. So. 
like I was talking about with 5.56 five, earlier, you're going to have that higher muzzle velocity with a 20-inch barrel as opposed to a 16. For 300 blackout, you shouldn't have any problem have a fairly tight package, uh, you know, with a 16-inch barrel. Uh, I know a lot of guys use that and are very happy with it. And if you can hunt with your AR-15 uh, in your state, by all means, uh, 300 blackout's a great choice. Yeah, yeah, small, short, compact rifle, perfect for trekking through the brush. You're just going to have to be close. Uh, I've got the ballistic data here right in front of me. Those 125 grainers are going to be right around that 1,000 foot-pound mark, around the 150-yard range. So you're going to have to be kind of close. But that's a pretty fairly reasonable shot, especially in the forest here in Indiana. That's, you know, you're going to have a lot yeah. of brush. So that shouldn't be really much of an issue. Not too different from what 30-30 hunters are used to accommodating. And exactly. If you would ever hunt with 5.56, five, that's, that's, again, apples to apples. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and 5.56, five, of course, there's a lot of controversy as far as deer hunting is concerned with that. With those heavier bullets, you should be okay, but most states don't allow it. I've met old timers who toppled whitetail with 22 LRs. I mean, oh, again, yeah, I've heard we, that story uh, too. We have the controversial opinion that you shouldn't break the law here. I that's know. That's not to say it can't be done. Of course, and lots of things can be done with uh, you know certain calibers, and we, we talk about this. I feel like every time we bring this up, uh, you know, hunting bear with a 22 LR, and just because you can do it doesn't mean it's a good idea or it's legal to do so. And yeah, I mean, like you yeah. said, it's controversial following the law thing. Look, if you're not a real man and you don't want to hunt bear with a 22 LR, then me and Chris are going to judge you, but not on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe in private over a couple beers we could talk about it. But, uh, you know, here uh, we're all law and order on this podcast. Yeah, me and Chris are about to get drunk and make fun of you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe after we, we turn the record button off, we could do that. But uh, but here, no, uh, like I said, with, uh, with a 300 blackout, probably about 150 yards for a deer. Uh, but still, that's more than reasonable, especially here in the Midwest, uh, where most of your shots are probably going to be under 100 yards. Chris, talking about ammo popularity, I think we could say the 300 blackout is here to stay. You're not taking a gamble on a uh, about to become obsoleted cartridge if you start pouring money into a 300 black build. Completely agree with you on that one, Dave. You should have no problem building a 300 blackout. I know multiple companies are now making barrels for it. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It's like I said, it is loved by the shooting community, who really just wanted that intermediate 30 caliber package in an AR-15, and it really gives you that power that you want without having to, you know, completely change platforms and go to an AK. Yeah. Well, gosh, I'm stretching my uh, my brain here. I don't I don't know if I have anything else to say about the 300. Did we compare it enough to the 556? Five, five, I know that's the title of this podcast. I reckon we did. I think we did. You know, I, I think that this gives you know everybody who's viewing this. Let us know down there in the comments what you think. But uh, I think the 300 blackout a great option if you're looking to get a 30 caliber bullet coming out of that AR-15 without having to upgrade to an AR-10 or an AK, uh, but if you love those guns, then by all means go for it. But as far as comparing to the 5.56, I mean, the 5.56 is gonna have a flatter trajectory, it's gonna have a longer range, it's great for varmint hunting. Whereas, you know, your 300 blackout, a little bit reduced effective range, but gives you that power that the 30 caliber bullet offers. All right, so there's only one more question I have, and this is a serious one, Chris. Okay, I'm ready. Where can I find 300 blackout and 5.56 ammo for sale? Dave, you can get all of your ammo here at ammo.com. Make sure you're clicking that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon. Save some money while loading up on 300 blackout or 5.56. And we will catch you on the next one.